As I mentioned earlier, there are times where we might want to leave the solution in implicit form. Implicit, of course, remember from, oh, I don't know, pre-calculus <laughs> algebra somewhere in there, that we don't actually solve it for y equals, right? So we leave it as a function of x, function of y on both sides, that kind of thing. All right, so I have y prime of x is equal to the cosecant of y times the cosine of x over 2, and y of pi is equal to pi over 2. Hmm. Okay, well, one thing I might want to remind myself of is that cosecant is 1 over sine by definition. It's one of the identities, one of the many identities we learn in pre-calc. So that means that I could multiply both sides by sine of y, have y prime of x equals cosine of x over 2. And lo and behold, look at that. There's my function of y. There's my dy dx, or my y prime of x. And here's my h of x. It's separable, which of course it is. I gave us a whole page to do it, <laughs> which is a sign. OK, so now let's solve this. So this is sine of y dy dx is equal to the cosine of x over 2. And yes, if you're thinking, I could have done the dy dx step ahead of, sure, you could have done that right there. Hell, you could do it right at the beginning. Who knows? OK, so sine of y dy is equal to the cosine of x over 2 dx. And now I'm going to integrate both sides. So integrate, integrate. So when I integrate sine, the integral of sine is negative cosine. The integral of cosine, of course, is sine, but the problem is that it's x over 2. So technically, this is like a baby u substitution. u would be x over 2, du would be a 1 half. We don't have a half, so we do this, 2 plus c. All right, so then we know that that's true. Right, that's a general solution right there, general solution. But now we want the particular solution. So to find the particular solution, we substitute in our initial value, which is y of pi is equal to pi over 2, and solve for c. OK. So we're going to do that. So I will take negative cosine of y, which is pi over 2, is equal to 2 sine of pi over 2 plus c. And remember, don't get confused by this notation. That's x, that's y. Right? y is a function of x. OK, so let's see. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. So that means that c is negative 2. And so therefore, the negative cosine of y is equal to 2 sine of pi over 2, take away 2. This is our solution. And we're not going to solve it for y. We're just leaving it like it is. right? This is an implicit form solution. Now, they asked us to draw the function. So I drew it in Desmos so you could see it. And I drew it in a couple ways. So I'm not going to have to draw all of these. That'll just be too annoying <laughs> for words. But there are actually infinitely many solutions, as you can see. So don't worry about that part yet. So I'm looking at all of those little oval shapes. And that is the graph of the solution, believe it or not. Um, so I'm going to draw that graph a little bit with some scale. So let me go draw that one second. There, I actually drew a picture that's more like that one right here. So you can see because I traced it. All right, so there's that picture. Isn't it beautiful? Okay, and this was 0 and this was about 20 over here. This was about negative 10 and positive 10. Now, the trick is that this is all the solutions. However, they gave us an initial value of pi and pi over 2, right? So if I think about that point, if I think about the point pi, pi over 2, that would be at 3.14 and about 
which means this solution is actually the one we're looking at because it's got the point 3.14 and 1.57 on it. Right, it'd be right about there, right? Somewhere there. Let's start it right there. All right, now what is that? I'm trying to restrict my domain to that piece. So let's go back and look at the original problem. We were given this, which is of course one over sine y. Now remember the sine of zero is zero, right? So this doesn't exist when y is equal to zero because if y is equal to zero, that makes this function not exist because that'd be one divided by zero, which is bad, right? So let's make a note. The original function Well, I guess relationship is better word for it, but original differential equation, how about that? The original differential equation does not exist at y equals zero, right? It can't. Okay, so if y is equal to zero, what would that mean for the rest of it? Using this substitution in here. So if I let y be equal to zero, that'd be the negative cosine of zero would be equal to two sine. Oh, that's x over two, not, not pi over two. Oh my goodness. I'm making an equation out of it, not a particular solution. Sorry, that's x over two. All right, so sine of zero over, oh no, not zero over two. I'm solving this for x, sorry. I'm doing it wrong again. x over two minus two. All right. So then this would be negative one equals two sine x over two minus two. I'd add two, divide by two. So that'd be one equals two sine of x over two. And that would mean one half equals sine of x over two. So some angle would have a sine value of a half. Hmm. Okay, on the unit circle what angle has a sine value of a half, a y value of a half? So that'd be pi over six and five pi over six. So that means that this angle x over two has to be equal to pi over six or five pi over six, which means that x itself is pi over three because you multiply both sides by two or five pi over three. So that's our domain right here, which means we're looking from pi over three is less than x, which is less than five pi over three. We can add that on to that solution. Because the implicit solution has lots and lots and lots of ovals, but the one we're particularly looking for goes through the point pi pi over two, which is conveniently enough in between pi over three and five pi over three. So there are other values, of course, um, that's where all these other curves are coming from, because you could wrap around and do other revolutions to get other values, right? But pi, conveniently enough, is between pi over three and five pi over three. If you will, pi over two is between pi over six and five pi over six. And since we're taking X and dividing it by two, that's why that's going to work out, all right? So we drew all the infinite graphs, we picked out the one we want, and that meant we had to have a domain restriction to look at the particular one that we were looking for, which in this case was pi over three to five pi over three. 